about now? Okay, that looks like it's working. Hello? Hello! Hey everyone! Today's episode, we're going to be making some cavern walls. So, first things first, I'm going to open up my base.blend. This base is a perfect 25mm base, and I made it by copying MZ4250. He has a Patreon and a Shapeway storefront that have all of his D&D miniatures available to download for free. I highly advise checking it out if you're into anything miniature or D&D. You can probably find something that suits your needs here. So I just downloaded one of his models, copied the base off of it, and then I use it to kind of properly size anything that I'm going to build, especially if it's for my D&D game. And now I'm going to just make walls. It's... I've had some troubles with uh, kind of learning Blender in general. I have uh, taken your comments to heart and I realize now that I have to apply the size because I do a lot of shaping and sizing in object mode, which, you know, I don't really know what I'm doing. So apply the size and then you won't have as many issues as I do. Secondly, Real big warning, I haven't actually got a really clean print of this wall yet. I'll show you all of my failures and where they failed. Now there's numerous reasons. One of them might be that the resin that I had sitting in the vat for the first print had been sitting in the vat for a couple weeks, kind of in direct sunlight. Not direct direct sunlight, because it has like a UV barrier around it, but I didn't put like a paper bag over it or anything. I just left it there. Sometimes you get busy, right? But the subsequent prints that didn't work might have been caused from user error, especially in Blender. I had a lot of weird delaminations and stuff like that, as well as, I think, after I looked at the date on my resin, that this was the resin canister that came with my printer when I got it, like, two years ago. So, old resin might not be a great thing to use. Just word of warning, probably should use some new stuff. So this is one of the larger sculpts that I ever did and I kind of wanted it just to match the stuff I had made before. So it's cavern walls, right? Trying to do stalactites, those like sediment layers that you get kind of in a cavern wall and make it look visually interesting on each side. I haven't come up with a great way to kind of make it modular. I have I've seen your comment, I want to do this, however, I'm also really inexperienced. So if you have any suggestions or ideas on how to make these kind of connect together or I exchangeable, I want to do like an archway and some like interesting corners and stuff like that. Maybe even make it so that you can 3D print different assets that like just plug into the walls, so like have little, little nooks and crannies that are just in the wall or maybe you can just drill those out and then just plug in like some mushrooms or some of the crystals or something like that just to give a little bit of visual intrigue to the wall. I also built this wall with the intention of giving it like a small base. However, I did end up going back at the end and I'll show you that I just kind of booleaned off the bottom so that it wasn't <laughs> like the base was having trouble printing and when I did that it printed okay. It printed with some delamination, but once again, probably old resin. Learned my lesson. Also, like I said earlier, I've noticed that I had a lot of sharp edges every single time I remesh at like 0.05 or 0.02 or however deep I'm going remeshing. And that apparently can be solved by applying my scale before remeshing, which is amazing to know. <laughs> I will do that in the future. Like I said, I'm, I'm definitely not an expert at this. I can, however, kind of make what I want. Sort of. It looks like cavern walls. And after I printed it, I was like, these these will do. It They're not perfect, but they'll do fine. And I've always found that anything, even if it's not perfect, if it's just cardboard with you having cut a little bit out of it or done a little bit of Sculpey modeling or something like that, really adds to the game. So having anything more than that definitely makes it nice. So another thing is I've kind of wanted to start being conscious of size constraints for like hauling, <laughs> moving a giant box of models around to wherever you're playing your D&D game isn't always the easiest thing to do. 
I'm already doing it because I like printed so many of MZ4250's models that I'm like, I got like this giant box of just like little figurines that I haven't painted yet. I kind of want to figure out a way to make things that like break down f relatively flat so you can store a lot in like a shoe box or something and carry those around. Some kind of method that uses maybe pillars and then the walls that connect into them. I'm, I'm not an engineer. <laughs> this is just using Blender is already kind of difficult enough if I'm starting to like engineer things and then try to emulate those in Blender. Oh man, I don't know if I'll be able to do it. If it was made out of like tape and cardboard, yeah, I could make something that lays relatively flat, but I'm trying. So if you guys have any ideas on kind of something to do with that, I would love to hear them and I will definitely try my best to make them. No promises, I'm not great. So after all of the modeling was done and it's substantially larger than I initially thought, it's gonna have to be resized before I print it. I'm going to hollow out the inside by just making a rough shape and adding a boolean modifier to the wall. And then hopefully it'll use less resin, unless you leave it sit for a couple days like I did on my last print and it hardens over in a layer and you gotta like crack that out before you can drain the resin. <laughs> I'm a mess here, guys. Here's me adding the base. Looking back, I could have done this a hundred times better, but when you're in the heat of the moment, you build things weird. However, it's gonna end up getting cut off. I'll include the STL up on our Patreon if you want the based version. I never got it to print well. And after a lot of tinkering around and trying different iterations of even building the base, I'm not sure what I did wrong. I'll include a warning on it. <laughs> print at your own discretion. After you got a model that you like, which I did like this at the time <laughs> before my printing catastrophe, Simply save it as an STL or export it as an STL and boom, you can open it in any of the 3D modeling programs. I'm still amazed that I'm even kind of coming up with printable sculpts. I'm very inexperienced. I, I know I'm like really hammering home on the inexperienced thing, but I am and I am making stuff that can be printed. So it's amazing. Try it, just try it. If you have a 3D printer, Blender's free. Just try doing something, because it, it feels great the first time you print something that you made, and that feeling doesn't fade. <laughs> You're like, I made this thing, and now it's sitting on my countertop. It feels great. So I've got it opened up in Chidu Box, and it's too big. I, I could have realized that. I kind of went ham on the modeling a little bit. But you can scale it to fit your build plate in the program, so it worked perfectly. Just scale it, put it at a bit of an angle, add some supports. So I've gotten okay at making my prints come out. Obviously these didn't come out great, but none of them detached from the build plate. That I'm, I'm positive it was resin issues, which is my fault. But when putting in supports, if you have your program kind of set up with how you like to support things, it does it pretty much for you. You just click support and it supports it. You do have to sometimes be careful after you slice it or when you're looking at smaller models to be sure that all of the overhangs are supported. It won't necessarily support between the model itself. So if you got like a bow or an especially long spear or something like that, you have to go in and kind of just manually add some supports. It'll show you where to do it with these little tiny gray squares. After I'm feeling pretty good about it being supported, I open it up in my Longerware program, which is just the software that came with the 3D printer, and it has all of the exposure times pre-programmed in it, which is very handy for me. Real quick interjection, I have learned via comment that higher exposure times can lead to less detail showing up. I haven't had that problem with using the pre-programmed settings with my Longerware stuff, I have, however, had my exposure times too low trying to print stuff and it not coming out correctly. Now you slice it, you make sure there's no floating islands and everything is connected, you give it your desired exposure time, you put it on your pen drive, you bring it to your 3D printer, and here it is printing. Now, like I said, I had a lot of issues this time. Right away, half of the raft deconnected. The raft is just that piece that's on the build plate that's a little bit thicker. I'm sure, looking at it after it printed, it's a completely different color of resin. It's probably that the resin wasn't mixed and that I left it sit for a really long time. Just a couple weeks. Also, that resin was part of the old resin, I guess. I 
did not keep track of my resin very well and I guess I was printing with stuff that was almost two years old. So th the fact that any of it came out is kind of exciting. And here are my attempts. This one obviously didn't come out very well. Ooh, you know, I, and I was still trying to diagnose problems so I printed it again. The raft adhered to the build plate this time and I think that's because I had shaken up the resin it was mixed well but it still had the delamination in the base. So I went back and I tried printing it at a different angle, which caused me to resize the whole thing. This time, it printed okay, but I ran out of resin because I was in a hurry <laughs> and I didn't add any more. So that's another mistake. Like I said, I was kind of a mess in this one, but I also was like, I'm done with this base thing. I, I think I'm having too many troubles with that. I want to print it at the other angle and I can't figure it out. So I went back and I just booleaned off the entire base. Well, I deleted the base and booleaned it flat. So it sits flat. And I printed it again. And this time it came out really well. However, this had taken me another couple days to get back to. And I think that the old resin was really messing with it. And it had just a few delamination spots. And also, I will say that it took me a couple days to get to cleaning the model. <laughs> I've been busy, and uh, I did end up with a layer of it hardened, so wasn't on my, my best game here. But it did come out and was usable. I'm gonna use the other ones because, you know, having it look a little off isn't that big of a deal. But I also completely kind of want to remake the cavern wall idea once I figure out like an engineering way to hook cavern walls together and have maybe just half of the wall be printed instead of these entire circular areas cuz these these will take up a lot of room in my little my little shoebox of gaming pieces and i know i'm going to want a lot of them the models are available to download off of our patreon for free i'll include the dot blends if you want to mess around with them the cavern wall based Word of warning, they didn't print very well for me. I'll include the other one that has no base. That one printed much better. If you wanted to help me out and have some suggestions on how I should modularly build these, I would love to hear that. I, I really do want to kind of make something that clamps together in an interesting way. I just haven't quite figured it out. And I don't want anything that has to like add hardware to it. I don't want to have to like pin it or anything. I want to print everything. Everything must be printed. And I'm open to suggestions. So in this episode, many mistakes were made. But that's how you learn. And I hope that my mistakes maybe help you along on your path. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't yet. Stay safe. I love you all. Goodbye. <laughs>